Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm trying my new microphone, so I hope it works. <laughs> um, I just had, sorry for my wet hair. I was like, um, just showered. I have clients all day. As you can see, my face is still like a little sleep connected. Um, that's a polite way of saying puffy. Uh, and, uh, but I wanted to get this to you before I got on with my day and forgot like, you know, what, what the message is. So I had like the last few weeks I've been wrestling with kind of a harsh experience in that, you know, when you're, oh, hi, Leanne, hi. <laughs> you know, when you are like an empathic, empathetic person and people you love need help, you help them. Like I know I, and probably many or all of you watching, um, whenever you hear anything that's going wrong, your first thought is like, how can I help? What can I do to help? Do I know anyone who can help? Do I have any support, advice? Is there anything I can do? In the very least, I can send love. Like, that's how our brains work. And this is like a really good thing, that, but we also have to remember to protect ourselves. And if you're like me, this is the lesson you learn again and again and again. There are too many times when I dive in and help others at my own uh, cost and sometimes unnecessarily, you know, the payment is, uh, you know, at my price of my emotional and physical well-being. So I had a situation like this where a lifelong friend, Georgina, contacted me saying she needed help. She was being, you know, attacked by, you know, demons and uh, you know, reptilians and stuff like that. And uh, a lot of bad stuff was happening to her. And she lives like on the other side of the country from me. So this is not like, you know, oh, let me walk over and help you out. So I, you know, we were doing some distance support. Um, and normally I don't do house clearings because like, um, my, I have so much light shining from me that the beings you want cleared from the house find my energy unpalatable. So they just clear away. And excuse me, I wet hair is like longer than my dry hair. So it's like tickling my neck. Um, so if someone asks me to go and do a house clearing, I'll walk in the house and all the dark entities will clear out. And then when I, you know, and I can put up like light structures and whatever, but if I don't know what, you know, if I'm not connected with or whatever, um, it's just like, I don't enjoy it. It's not for me, you know, and a lot of times they just come right back in because we haven't severed the connection the person has with them. There are people who do house clearings and a lot of times I do healings on people who do house clearings and, you know, it's hard. It's hard on a person's body uh, physical and emotional well-being to constantly be in there. So I work on a higher realm and I work more with, you know, like, um, uh, galactic earth healers, you know, like galactic shamans, earth nature connected angelic healers, people who are like divine conduits like me who are connected on all levels. So the best way for me to ever help anyone is, um, to teach them how to heal themselves and heal their own environment. And really the easiest, best way for that is to become a light worker, a light healer, so connected with your light and what you're connecting with that all the buggity boos find you unpalatable and they stay away. Um, so I ended up flying across country at my friend's request, like right before Christmas. Oh my God, not a time when I have disposable income or time uh, to do this. But you know, when a lifelong friend is like desperate and needs your help, you do it. So I flew across country 
and I forgot to honor my gut instinct. I was so busy on how can I help. I forgot to remember most of the time when someone's saying, I need you to help me, I need you to help me, it's because they don't want to do the work themselves. And um, so I spent days reconfiguring all the energy in the house. Like, I'm not going to go into the details, but it called for all of my prana shakti work which is, you know, the most powerful healing modality on our planet. I called for, I was working with, you know, ev all the guy, everyone. There were points when I was literally connected with all frequencies of all dimensions and all timelines and all beings of love to like set everything. And I was teaching my friend and her family and their friends how to take care of everything. Um, there were certain requests that I needed from my friend for me to be able to do this, that she ended up not only not honoring, but she sabotaged. And then um, she got jealous of the attention I was getting. And she like spread some really nasty rumors about me that were like, not only obviously incorrect, but anyone who knows me were like, that's ridiculous. And um, it, then she took the skills that I gave to her and she used them to cause me harm and to try to suck all the energy through me for her purposes. And the thing is, if you're not trained to do this kind of work, it can drive you a little nuts, you know, too, too much good energy too much of any energy is um, too much. You, you just, you have to build up your energetic structure. That's why I'm always saying, do your internal chakra work before you grow your external structure so you can support the energy. If you send your crown chakra up so high that it's flimsy, you're not doing anyone any good. And usually, I mean, you know, that's when you like fall asleep or space out. But when you have a solid structure, then you can send your root all the way to the core of earth. You can even encompass all of earth. You can encompass the entire universe with your root and send your crown up to all dimensions if you have a good structure. So anyway, I got back home and I was heartbroken. I, I mean, I'm, it's, it's rough when someone you've known literally your entire life, you know, and, and my family had to get along without me. And I mean, this was like so much, I was just like absolutely bereft. And I knew the only thing I could do was literally disconnect energetically, which meant that because, you know, Georgina would rather be queen of the damned than one of a group in paradise. And when I look back on our lifelong friendship, I realized, yeah, <laughs> that she's always been that way. I just, I was so used to it, I didn't see it. And as a result, you know, I wasted a lot of my time and money and effort. However, I also met some amazing people and I gained skill and experience and knowledge. And, you know, it wasn't like a waste, but it was a heartbreak. And if I had been wiser before going in, my heart wouldn't have been broken. So I spent yesterday uh, with a lot of meditation, thinking about like, I need to take care of myself right now. And what, how can I do that? So I was in meditation asking my guides, you know, and uh, Metatron came through with some good advice and some other masters. And um, we had to disconnect me completely from my friend, which meant Georgina now doesn't have any of my protection. She's purposefully remaining in a dark place without support from me. So if I'd stayed connected, she would keep sucking energy through me and um, 
that would be very bad for me. Um, so we disconnected everything and everything that belongs to me came back to me and everything belongs to anyone else. You know, the angels, the, you know, the cosmic architects, everything went back to them. So it was a total withdrawal, which, you know, of course has me really sad. And um, then last night I went into meditation and it was one of those great nights where instead of going to sleep, I sat in meditation and the next thing I knew it was seven in the morning, you know, and I went up to the Galactic Collective, um, which for those of you who don't know, the Galactic Collective is like the United Nations for all dimensions and all frequencies. Um, it's for, it's like the Akashic Library, only it's representatives. And um, I went up there to talk with them about my situation and um they had some really great advice and then they sent me to the etheric surgeon realm which is so cool um it's imagine a hospital and university it's like an educational as well as medical you know like medical education medical practice and it has one big portal opening to the galactic collective and another big portal opening to all the akashic libraries because this is a place where uh beings of any dimension any frequency any timeline anywhere who are healers can go and evolve their uh their healing skills um and they um and it can be the the total soul who's a healing soul or it can be individual lives so like if you are in this life a medical practitioner and you want to do like really great healing when you finish this life of course you reconnect with your soul and all your past lives and the energy of your future lives but you can also go to the etheric surgery realm and study there and even though it was just one night because you know time time i was there like i had my own room i had well it was like a dorm room so i had roommates and it was like beings from all over you know like many were not humanish looking at all and i was in classrooms and i was studying and i was assisting with surgical techniques it was as though i had gotten into a learning hospital and Everyone kept calling me doctor. We we're all calling each other doctor. It was um, really amazing. Like, while I've connected with the realm of the etheric, etheric surgeons before, I've never really, you know, in my recollection, uh, who knows what I've done like in past before I became human. But in my recollection, this was like my first time really being there. And it makes sense it's my first time because, um, you know, before I became human, I was a little flighty, so I don't think I would have had the attention spam. So anyway, I spent about eight, seven hours. No, it was like 1 a.m. when I went in. I remember looking at the clock. So I spent about two hours with the Galactic Collective, which I do that all the time. That's no big deal. Um, well, I mean, <laughs> you're probably laughing at me. It is a big deal, but you know, any of us can do it. They're very, very welcoming. And then I spent, um, and they like talked with me about everything I did wrong and everything I did right and other ways I could have done things and how to handle myself and how to protect self and how best to help others. And what it came down to is some people are good at physically healing others. You know, like you go to the doctor and you say, please, uh, I have a flu, make me feel better. But then the doctor gives you a prescription and advice. It's up to you to follow it. Um, and if you don't follow it, then maybe you get some sort of issue. You have to go to a surgeon and they operate on you. But when they're done operating on you, they give you prescriptions, rest time advice. It still always comes up to you to heal yourself, which we know. I mean, of course we know that. Anytime any of us say, I'm a healer, 
we know that we're supposed to be just the conduit that allows the other person to heal themselves. So the lesson I learned is I'm not meant to really be a healer, even though I spent all that time in the etheric realm, surgery realm, I am meant to be a teacher. So if anyone comes to me, I can teach them how to do what I do. But if anyone asks me to heal them, it's too exhausting. And apparently I have no discernment on <laughs> how to do this. So I end up like depleting myself um, emotionally, energetically, I was fine. So, um, and that's the only way that I can protect myself from people who just want to take advantage. Um, because of course, and here's where I know every one of you is going to be like, yes, this is me. When you are an empathic, empathetic person, there will always be people who value and appreciate you and thrive by being around you and you thrive by being around them. And there will, yes, I, I love the hearts coming up. It's so true and it's the best. But there's also the people who will deplete you and take advantage of you and use you. And then when they feel like they're not going to get more out of you, they will do their best to demean and oppress and repress and harm you. And that's the lesson that I learned just again. Even if I've known someone literally since I was a baby, that doesn't mean that she's going to care one whit about my well-being. So unfortunately, one of the few people on the planet who knows what I was like when I was a little teeny tiny creature will not be someone I can reminisce with when I'm old. But fortunately, I learned that lesson and um, I'm sharing it with you. So I want to tell you about the etheric surgery realm because obviously I'm still a little bruised about that other thing. And um, I think it's nice for you all to know that even someone who does all this stuff all day, every day can still be, you know, fooled or taken advantage of. So at least, you know, you can forgive yourself when it happens to you. There's no, you know, like maybe the Dalai Lama is good at not being taken advantage of, but it's so hard for me to not dive in and help whenever I'm asked. The etheric surgery realm was so cool. So imagine like, like I said, an educational hospital is very much like that. Only you've got like amoeba creatures floating in the air. And when you look out the windows, every window shows portals to different dimensions. Like everyone had to feel at home. So everyone who was there and was beings from all dimensions, all frequencies, all timelines, all of every, like there were places that like, we can't even comprehend because once we say every dimension, every frequency in every dimension, every timeline in every frequency in every dimension, our brains kind of are like, there's nothing else. There's so much else. And they're all there studying on how to heal. So um, I urge everyone to start inviting these extraordinary healers to come and assist with healing. If you are not used to being, like I've, I'm you know, an experienced etheric surgeon and Pranashakti master teacher, so um, the techniques I use would not be the techniques I'd recommend for someone else who's not so experienced, but you can always connect with them, keep them outside of your body, because you don't want to invite anyone in your body that you don't know who or what they are or what effect they'll have. Invite them to help you from where they are there, from where they are out there to your target. So if you wish to send healing to someone or something, uh, say, you know, you're a Reiki practitioner or you're just sending love, you know, everyone, everyone has within us the best healing technique, which is filling yourself with love and letting it flow through you to whatever it is you wish to help. Um, so if you are sending love or healing to someone or something, invite the etheric surgeons to also target it. And 
then like if you're sending it to me right now feel welcome to practice in oh my god <laughs> i feel that thank you oh my god i just got hit with so much love thank you um practice when you're sending love to also ask the etheric surgeons to target and send it straight down thank you i'm feeling that oh my word that's beautiful and so i'm getting it like heart to heart and like cosmic downward and you know if you want to heal the planet feel open to send that to like a park or a tree or you know an animal like if you have an animal in your home uh but understand like they can get overwhelmed so always you know say to the amount that this being you know like it's offered and then the being will absorb what they're comfortable with um you know those of you who practiced you know healing on my old dog lord snaggletooth know that whenever he felt like he was getting too much energy he would start going yeah, 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 yeah. and he'd you know, like snap his little mouth in the air never at people but he, he was always very communicative you're blasting me with too much um but <clears throat> it was really like i'm going to start spending more time out there they invited me to come up and practice more and we're learning specific techniques um and i don't remember all of it oh my god it felt like i was there for like months but um the one technique that i just told you is a good one the other one is you can only send love to targets that you love so for those of you who are sending love to you know people you don't love all you're doing and they they showed me what you're doing then is you're creating a connection and it's not like an altogether healthy connection because you're sending love to someone who is either gobbling it all up like the way Georgina was doing to me or they're sending you back toxic energy to keep you too deplete to realize that they're sucking up all your love what you can do is send love to those you love and invite them to send it forward and eventually those you cannot love but you want them to receive love will be surrounded by love and those who actually love them can send it to them so this calls for healing on a soul level as opposed to a heart to heart level so um if you want to send healing to you know our politicians or to you know those in trauma or I don't know, big game hunters, people that I'm sorry, I don't ever want any connection with them. What one can do, what I would do is go up to my soul level and say, send love to their souls to help them with, you know, making more loving, healthier choices. It might work, it might not, you know, it's uh, not, you know, people, if they are on their life path, there's, they're going to be on their life path. And if they've gone off their life path for dark reasons and they're so far on it that they're just causing lots of destruction, then they're surrounded by a lot of darkness and they're being, you know, energetically fed by a lot of dark entities. Then really you need to let people who are more experienced with that handle it. Um, and what they do is they start healing the dark entities so like you you have a person who's dogpiled by dark entities and buggity boos and brickety backs and whatever so you know like uh people who are experienced with that like me this is what i do best we go in and we start on the outermost and we're sending love and light so all these dark entities are released from the darkness return to who and what they were before um you know uh choices free will took them down this path until eventually we're at this center thing so you can see why if you as an individual are trying to send love to someone who's in the middle of that it would really take a lot of effort on your side to you know you don't get a lot of bang for your buck so to speak but if you send a great deal of love to the songbirds outside your window or to you know those that you can love and practice on your soul level sending it to their souls 
that's a lot more enjoyable for you. And that's how you build your muscles and develop your strength and ability to go forward with this. So that was like something we practiced a lot in the etheric realm. And again, like just imagine like this hospital full of like, imagine, like, um, you know, in the first Star Wars movie where they go into that bar and it's, like, all the beings from all over and the weird aliens band playing. Like, imagine something like that mixed with, like, an educational hospital. It was, like, so cool. It was so much fun. Um, and I am sure, because I'm seeing so many awesome, intuitive, extraordinary people here, that um, just by my talking about it, somewhere in the near future, you guys are going to be rising up to the etheric surgeon realm. You know, we're so used to talking about bring the etheric surgeons down to go into your body and use your body to heal. We don't necessarily think about going up there to them and saying, teach us. So that's it. I have we're looking at the client. I have clients coming. We're looking at the clock. I have clients coming soon. But um, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for helping me to heal my heartbreak and to imprint this lesson that hopefully I will not keep learning. Um, and thank you for, uh, you know, learning about the etheric surgery realm with me. I look forward to more. Um, you know, visits to there and sharing them with you. As I learn more techniques, I'll share what's appropriate forward. Thank you guys. Love you all. And um, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.